YouTube is one of the fastest moving platforms. Content is being watched at a rate of 5 billion videos a day. That's a lot of zeros. Channels have to create daily, bi-weekly, or at the very least weekly content. But a tap can't pour forever if it's not being constantly refilled. So that's why I think it's really important to every once in a while take a step back from producing to stay inspired. But what is inspiration? What does it mean to be inspired? And where does it come from? Is it in people, in furniture, in nature, in the built environment, in culture, in colour, in texture? Is it a result of an approach, an object, or a concept? Well, in my opinion, it lies in opening your eyes. Let me take you on a walk. So I'm just doing a quick 10 minute circle of the area and with everything I see that inspires me I'm going to work out a way to materialise it into a project. Okay so this one's kind of a cheat because I saw it yesterday but the thing that caught my eye about it is how the repeated action of cars driving over the road eroded a void. So the concept I had based on this was to take a soft wood like pine or spruce and put it in a drive or walkway and then let people or cars move over it over a period of months and hope that that same process of erosion would happen. And then once that was done I could use that piece as a door front. Go on to the next one. Right, here's another one, bins. Their formations, their colour, you could use that. You can use that to inspire the formation of a shelving or display cabinet, with each compartment representing a bin, and the different colours of the bins forming the backdrops. You could also emulate the functions of the bins, having tops that open and then dispensers at the bottom. Or you could use it to inspire this form of a lampshade with the taper being taken from the taper of the bins and the groove representing the groove is also evident as a structural feature of the bin. And you can translate that form into other objects. For example, salt, pepper or spice shakers. You could turn this bath into a chair or a sofa or use it as a source of inspiration for utilising other found materials. For example, at another skip, I found this bent up wire lampshade. And then use the formation of the wire it's made out of to inspire a wire furniture range. So now, let's get back to the wall. I hurt myself today to see if I still feel I focus on the thing So I was just walking past where I noticed these two barrels stacked on top of each other. You could use the form the inspiration shape of a chair or for the centre mass of the table but you don't you don't even need to go outside to find sources of inspiration yesterday I cut apart a pallet and because I cut across the last stretcher slat support this thing I ended up with loads of these offcuts, which would be perfect for a texture, say on a door front. Or you could do what Wycliffe Stutchbury does and create pieces of wall art and room dividers.
And then a couple of weeks ago I ordered some steel tubing and it came on this massive six metre long bar and if you look at the texture you'll see the mill scale and grease from the steel has worn off to create this effect on the wood. You could use this to create a door front pattern or you could take a piece of wood and rub it on the steel's grease to ebonise it. So of all of these things I've been able to come up with ideas pretty quickly, but even if you can't think of an idea or you're not happy with the thing you thought of, this is all contributing to a big pool of knowledge you can draw from in future projects. You see at A level, the way we are told to work is think of a problem, research existing products and come up with a solution. And whilst I think they're right, it's really important to look at what's already been proven to work and constantly try to reinvent the wheel. Existing products should only be looked at in the finalising stages of a project and not be your first part of call. Because if not, your thought process will be limited by their creations and you'll inevitably end up emulating, if not copying their work, not coming up with something truly original and not having ownership or being fulfilled or satisfied with what you're creating. However, to go back to the questions I posed at the start of this video of what is inspiration, what does it mean to be inspired, and where does it come from? If you have your eyes and your mind open and see the artistic potential in all objects, because things surround us all the time, not only will you come up with more interesting, dynamic and unique designs, but you will also be in a constant state of inspiration a constant state of wanting to output creatively and most importantly to me because a lot of my own personal satisfaction lies in problem solving and originality you'll be truly fulfilled, truly innovative and creating your own personal identity and style that is not mimicking somebody else's.